Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Welcome back to Sunday morning and the old cookbook show. Today we're gonna to do a recipe out of this cookbook called As You Like It, Old Philadelphia Recipes. This was sent in by a viewer. Thank you very much for sending it to us. Um, this is compiled by the Four Counties Garden Club of Philadelphia in 1934. And so it is a, a community cookbook. It is a community cookbook. And most of the recipes though in this front section are from the same half dozen people um, who I imagine are members of the Four Counties Garden Club of Philadelphia. And the recipes, um, the recipes are, are very indicative of sort of that uh, in 1934 terms, pre-World War II terms, sort of that middle upper middle class, um, that slice of, of America that wasn't really affected all that much by the Great Depression. Certainly they cut back a little bit, but they still drove an economy that was doing pretty well for a lot of people. Um, and these people for this book definitely would have been in that group. They were doing okay. They may have cut back a little bit and you can see in some of the recipes where they've cut back uh, some of the ingredients. You also have to, when you look at recipe books like this from this time period, also realize that things that we think of as expensive today, expensive, hard to get, were more common and less expensive in this time period. But you get to the back of this book and there's a whole separate section. And this section I find very interesting. Um, it is called, Receipts from the collection of Mr. John Wagner, 1934. And so these, I imagine, are his, uh, from his personal recipe collection, um, either his personal recipe collection or that of his, of his wife. And there are a number of recipes in here from someone named Mrs. Hunt the Rabbit. And earlier in this section, it's handwritten um, that this is someone's cook. And I don't know if that's Mr. Wagner's cook or Mrs. Wagner's cook, I'm, I'm not sure. A um, lot of dead ends in my research on that one, uh, nothing conclusive. And so for this Sunday morning old cookbook show, we're going to do something called the Hellfire Stew. Now, this is one of those recipes um, that I look at the list of ingredients and I look at the way that the method is written out. Then I look at the way recipes are supposed to be written in the order of ingredients, recipes, good recipes in today's thought process of writing a recipe, the ingredients are listed in the order that they're used. So if I look at this recipe, well-written recipe, it would seem, um, in the order that they're used, and then I look at the method, there's no browning in the method. There's no use of oil to brown the meat. There's no softening of the onions or the green pepper. Um, this is dump it all in the pot and simmer it. Or at least the way it's written is dump it all in the pot and simmer it. And I have to believe that that is true. Um, because if, if the meat was browned and then the onions were browned or sweated out, the can of tomatoes wouldn't be the second thing on the list. So let's dump it all in and see what happens. In the order of the recipe, I'm using beef, but it says you could use beef or lamb. Can of tomatoes. Diced onion. Diced potato. Chopped parsley. Chopped green pepper. Now, I think we've come to the part of the recipe that is the hellfire part. We have a teaspoon of whole black peppercorns. Not crushed, not ground. One teaspoon of whole black peppercorns brings us to the hellfire portion. Um, I don't know. I don't know that that's gonna bring that much heat. I had, when I saw the title to this recipe, I had expected that there would be some, you know, some hot peppers and some chilies and, you know, things like that. But no, it's, it's just 12, a teaspoon of peppercorns, which is somewhere, depending on how heaped you heap your teaspoon, 
um, between a, a dozen and, and a dozen and a half peppercorns. Um, really not all that much heat, I don't imagine. Next in um, is thyme and sweet basil. Then we have peas, whole peas. Those go in. And then some stock. And so I have a mix of chicken and beef stock here. Now this is, this is one of those recipes where uh, you use a really good stock because a lot of your flavor is going to come from that liquid. Um, I, I, I know the browning step is very important to a lot of people. It's pretty important to me. I'm, I'm one of those people that I like to, I like to brown the beef and the onions and, and really build a fond in the bottom of the, of the pot. When you go back through time, when you go back through history, there is a there is a school of cooking thought where you don't brown anything. It all just goes into the pot and it gets cooked together and the flavor builds over a long, slow cook. Um, sort of akin to if, you know, essentially this is a stew. It's probably going to be more soup-like, I think, um, but you're braising that beef. So you could put this in the oven for four or five hours, tight lid, check it every once in a while, add a little bit more stock as it's needed because it still will evaporate even with a tight lid. And you're essentially braising that beef to get a, to get a stew. Um, and in the case of a lot of braises, you're not doing any browning before you put it in. You're just stick it in the oven. So I don't know how this is going to turn out. Um, it says that you could add some salt and ground black pepper if you want. Um, and that this pot will serve eight people. Maybe. So I'm going to put this on to a simmer. We're going to let this simmer and uh, we'll come back and give it a taste and see what happens. And I may just crack that lid just a touch. Now, the last step, it says, is to add two tablespoons of flour to thicken just before serving. I've mixed the flour in with some water to make a slurry so that it doesn't clump when you mix it in. And Okay, I'll just stir this in and I will let this cook for 10 or 15 minutes to thicken up. Hey, Glenn. Hey, Jules. Hey, friends. That is like boiling hot. <laughs> I just want to say a little observation. That might be a little hot to taste right now. Well, it is called Hellfire Stew. Yeah, but uh, does that mean there's lots of spicy things in it? That's usually how those names go, right? You'd think. No. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> yeah, I... I, I... I don't know what makes it hellfire stew. They could say a naughty word in the yeah, So in the they book? could say, say 1934, they could say a naughty word. That's it. That's got to be it. That's the only reason. It's a stew. It's good stew. It's got lots yeah. of great flavors. It's got a, you know more vegetables than usual, which is great for me. It's pretty plain. There's no hellfire. There's no heat other than, you know, it's hot physically, the, physically, physically hot. hot. And hot. So that, you know, the, the teaspoon of whole peppercorns does not add any heat. Maybe it, you maybe know. Maybe it doesn't peppery. Maybe in 1930, it would have been. I would say my mother would say it's probably hot. Yes. Because she, too much pepper and it's too hot for her. But there's not, <laughs> there's not too much pepper in this at all. No, it's quite, and I it, actually like it. And it could, it could use an extra layer of flavors. I, I find it a little bit one note. Hmm. There you go. Um, so what? You throw in some some uh, what's it, what, Vegemite or, or yeah, Marmite. Yeah, I, I, I put in some. I put in some. Put in some Marmite. Definitely the um, the beef. Oh, although I tell you, when you get a peppercorn hole, <laughs> oh, <laughs> you, get a, you get a wee bit of a bite. Maybe that's it. <laughs> um, and I would brown the beef. It doesn't tell you to brown the beef. It it's a recipe that's written in a way that lets me say for sure that you weren't supposed to brown the beef but I would brown the beef. Just add that extra layer of flavor, and that might be the layer that I'm expecting that I'm not getting. There you go. But I will be eating this for lunch for the next week, and I think I will enjoy it. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by.
See you again soon.